Welcome to the Bella Vista Gardening Program. I'm Jerry Horner, and with me today is Barb Templin. Thanks for she, having me back. You're welcome. I love to have you on the program. She is also a fellow member of the Bella Vista Garden Club. And this month we're going to be talking about spring planting for fall color. So we'll also be talking about upcoming events in the area and things to do in your garden in April, which is the mounting um, list. It's uh, yes. a longer list every month now. So, but the upcoming events we need to talk about, everybody's, you know, thinking about plant, uh, planting mm -hmm. and buying plants. So this is the start of the planting season. And so, the plant sales. And the plant sales. But you have to be careful because Mother Nature uh, can cause unusual temperature drops that we're not <laughs> expecting any time in May. We haven't experienced any oh, of those. Oh, well, we have. <laughs> We've had snow <laughs> on the plant sale day the first Saturday of May at one time. So, But the plants in the nurseries, they arrive early. And um, you just, you know, have to wait to plant them. So right. don't plant them too soon. Right. So, but the first uh, plant sale we want to tell you about is the Benton County Master Gardeners uh, Expo. Mm -hmm. It's their sixth annual expo, and I think we have a flyer of the um, of the plant sale there. It's at the First United Methodist Church, and off the square in Bentonville. It's from eight to one o'clock on Saturday, April twenty seventh. So they have a huge plant sale. Oh my goodness, and they have everything yeah. there. Yeah, and they have native plants, they have trees, they have shrubs, they have all kinds of things. And they're also going to have um, planted containers. They have such cute little oh, containers yes. that are yes, cute. they're so um, They're pretty. gonna have gardening exhibits. They'll have different uh, people to help with mm -hmm. different subjects, um, demonstrations. And then they have a lawn and garden yard sale with all things garden. So and, and the first hundred people that come oh two hundred two hundred yeah they changed oh, it to two hundred people trees. come they get a free tree yeah I'm not sure if what the tree is this year but it's uh, it was it's different than last year but it's, they have two hundred trees to give away um, and they also have a plant pathologist from uh, the U of A so if you have a plant problem you can bring a sample. And they will have their microscope there, and they can maybe help you and find out what it is. Right. So they will be there again that, this that'll year. That'll be very helpful. Yeah, it's very helpful. So master very gardeners helpful. are very helpful, and they, they like to share their knowledge and help yes. you. And the next um, plant sale is going to be on Saturday, May 4th. Now, that is the Bella Vista Garden Club plant sale. That's the big one. Hmm. Uh, it's at the Village Wastewater off Highway uh, 71. You have to be going south on 71. It's from 8 to 1 on May 4th, first Saturday of May. And we will lightly have, we will also have like lightly used garden items. And then we have our gardening, garden boutique mm -hmm. with a lot of neat things for gardening. And have a number of related garden items. And then Master Gardeners will be there also. We have 23 Master Gardeners in the Bella Vista Garden Club. So we will have Master Gardeners there. And um, this sale has been going on for, I know, more than 24 years. Right. But and we're going to have some annuals that right. uh, we get uh, donated to us. Okay. And then we plant them in different pots. Right. We're having um, potted plants. Right. Already right. potted for you. So all right. we have to do right. is just... So the container, you know, uh, gardening aspect mm -hmm. will be covered very well. Mm -hmm. And um, that seems to be a really big hit with wow. the, the people that come. Not only the perennials, the native plants that mm -hmm. we have, yeah. but um, also some of the, the annuals mm -hmm. that grow well in, in, in this container. area. Yeah, they already the pot the container for you. Don't even have to do that. Just buy right. the container. So that's, right. And they'll be there to answer your questions, too, if you have any questions. That's right. And then Nature's Calling at Village Wastewater will have their plants for sale, too. They usually have tomatoes if there's any left. But, right, um, because they... They sometimes have sales before the first Saturday of May, mm -hmm. um, but uh, they have they have quite a few plants for sale there too. Well, they have actually two plant sales, the 20th, well, April 20th and 27th, is that right? I'm not, not sure if they're going to have those. Oh, but okay. They usually do, okay. so you know, okay. just maybe swing by and see if they're if they're there. Yeah, but, everybody uh, swears by their tomato plants. Oh, they're wonderful. Sometimes they're 
they got little tomatoes on them before you bring That's them home. Right. And little That's buds right. are starting. That's right. so, because they start them in their greenhouse. So yeah. We don't have a greenhouse to do that. So. But Not today yet. we want to talk about spring planting for fall colors. So um, you usually think about fall color in the fall, you know, buying mums or whatever. But there are um, things you can plant in the spring and then in, in the fall you're going to have wonderful color with them. Mm -hmm. And we've got some photos. This is um, a little Henry sweet spire. That's what it looks like in spring. And the butterflies love it and the oh hummingbirds. And, and the bees. And the and bees. It's wonderful. Right. And I put this in my garden. This isn't mine, but I put this in my garden several years ago. And when um, fall came, isn't I looked out the window. I couldn't believe I thought it was a bur it looked like a burning bush. I said, yeah. well, I thought that was a sweet spire. But in the fall, color is just beautiful. Right. So that was a real bonus I had with that Do they plant. grow to be a fairly sizable bush? Uh, the regular sweet spire can get 10 to 12 feet. Ooh. The little Henry is shorter. It gets 3 to 4 feet, 5 okay. foot at the most. Okay. And you can trim it back. Okay. But uh, the little Henry is, is a little more manageable than the large one. But if you want a large sweet spire... Um, you can use, if you can use that in your garden, you can get okay. the, the regular sweet spire. Okay. And then the um, little blue stem, that's what it looks like. It's a grass, and it looks like that in the summer. It's, you know, pretty like a blue-green. Right, right. But then in the fall, it turns Isn't a beautiful gorgeous. color. So here you have, there's fall colors. If you planted mums in front of that, it would be beautiful. It would be beautiful. Some yellow mums and all. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. and here's the, you know, the difference. Here's the spring, summer, and here's the fall. You can see how different it looks. Looks like two different plants. It does. It does. So. And even, then, even putting um, black-eyed Susans or that yeah, sort of thing around there to, right. to, you know. Give it more color in the bottom. Right. Yeah. Now, this is, um, this is the willow blue star. This is a native, and it's a blue star, and that's what it looks like in the summer. That's a small one. They get... Um, like a bush, then about three foot maybe at the most. Um, and they'll just spread in a circle. They don't just wander all over. Well, they do have little sprigs on the ground that mm -hmm. sometimes grow. Mm -hmm. But they just, the clump just grows, and that's the summer. And then in the fall, it's got this beautiful uh, yellow, uh, yellow-green uh, foliage. It turns yellow-green. Well, I read yellow. that Missouri is probably the state that has the most... Uh, of this plant, um, and I don't know if that's because they have more prairie land or it could something. Be. Because yeah. that's where this—it's this a good prairie land mm -hmm. plant. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You bet. Fields and open mm -hmm. woods and yeah. right. And now this is a penstemon, and you see a lot of the penstemons, and then it's just a perennial, and uh, you'll see those in the garden centers all the time. And that's what it looks like in summer. And then in the fall, it has this beautiful fall color on the leaves. So now, how tall does that get? Uh, that only gets about two to two and a half foot tall. It's not real because tall. Because I had, I had. Uh, Depends on the variety. Yeah, because I had read that a lot of people use this for ground cover, kind well, of. Well, it's it's um, a different penstemon, I think. This one, it's like a blue husker. Okay. A blue husker, and it gets about two foot okay. tall. Okay. Well, to that. Three. That color in the fall is it's gorgeous. Beautiful. Yeah, so, it really yeah, is. You know, and then we, the Virginia. That's another one you see in the nurseries a lot. It's got a big green leaf, a thick leaf. Um, mm -hmm. In the summer, with some, I have a pink one that blooms pink. This is more of a red blooming. But in the fall, those those big leaves turn red. Sometimes they'll turn yellow, but sometimes they'll turn a reddish color. With that. So, that kind of like dark green yeah. with the red mm -hmm. there again. So the variation is really pretty. You get so. two seasons actually oh, yeah. from a lot of these plants. Absolutely. You know, sometimes three seasons mm -hmm. because sometimes they're evergreen through the uh, the winter months. Yeah, the Virginia will hold their leaves all right. winter long. Yeah, right. They will. Right. And then of course the spurge. This is a spurge called um, fire glow. And this is what it looks like in the summer. Now, there's, what did you say, how many? 2,400 types of spurge. 2,400. So I'm not going to talk about all those today. <laughs> so we're only going to talk about. For another time. We're going to talk about the, the fire glow. But all of these plants have so many oh different, you know, varieties you yes. can purchase. Yes. But in the summer, they have that beautiful, you know, bloom. And then in the fall, um, that's what they look like. 
they just kind of, the leaves just kind of droop down and they have a Well, uh, and I read too that this is, in the, this is in the um, family of poinsettias is what I oh. had I had read, um, and the the uh, the leaves have kind of a um, chartreuse edge mm -hmm. to them, you know. Yeah. Uh, so again, like I said it depends on the variety. There's yes. so many varieties. Yes, yeah. uh, uh, with twenty four hundred yeah. different types, you, you can bet. get twenty four hundred looks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Now this is called fragrant sumac. Now you see oh. the sumac in the wind, in the woods, you know, the the wild sumac, but there is one called fragrant sumac, and that's a pretty leaf in the summer. It's nice and glossy and and pretty green. And then in the fall, you know, the sumac in the fall is gorgeous color, right, all through the woods. But and the fragrant part of this mm -hmm. is that it smells like lemon. Mm-hmm. Has and a lemon just, scent. Oh yeah. 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 So. You never would expect that from. A sumac. No, that's that's <laughs> another bonus. You get right. another bonus. Right. And this is one of my favorites, American Beautyberry. That's oh, a native. Yes. And in the summer, it just has the pretty green leaves, and then these little berries pop out. Well, it blooms kind of white, I guess, kind of white blooms in the summer, and then these berries farm. And the first time we saw these, it was in Texas. We were going down to Texas and we stopped at a welcome station and they had a whole bed of these. Wow. And it was, oh, it just was like eye candy. I mean, so it was the, just beautiful. The berries are actually the seed then? Mm -hmm. That's the seed. So look at all the potential <laughs> blue, <laughs> beauty well, berries you could get. The, the birds love those. They never yes. get a hold of those. Yes. And then in the summer, it kind of gets a little bit more of a a yellow leaf, mm -hmm. you know, the leaves mm -hmm. turn are like, you know, they're green to yellow. And then in the winter, in the fall, they have these chartreuse leaves with those beautiful purple berries. So it's right. really striking. It's right. a beautiful, a beautiful. Now they plant. drop their leaves, correct? They do. They're um, deciduous. So they so will that drop the, their leaves. The, the berries. Well, by the time readily, they drop their leaves, the, berries the birds are, have gotten the berries. I, I think. See, so I you see. don't see too many berries after the leaves <laughs> after drop. After that, yeah. They, they love those <laughs> berries. And um, <clears throat> then the oak leaf hydrangea. I have several varieties of the oak leaf. Um, they are this just, might be Alice. That looks a little bit like Alice. Um, not Betty. <laughs> not Betty, just Alice, yeah. And this is what they look like in summer. They're just a beautiful bloom. They're, you know, six, eight inches long, ten inches long sometimes, and beautiful leaves. The leaves are all pointy and everything. So. And they're fairly sizable leaves? Or oh, yeah, not? they're okay. good-sized leaves. Okay. They're bigger than your hand, so they're they're good size. And it likes shade. You know, it's a shade uh, plant, but it's, it can take a little sun. Uh, and then in the fall, you get this beautiful color, that. Yeah, just a beautiful color. And those those blooms fade from white to like a a pinky green and then they turn brown but the, the leaves turn but this is a, like a three season plant because right. in the winter after the leaves drop this you get this beautiful looking bark it's like a peely bark and it's a lot of interest in the winter time so it's like a three season plant right. this one is right so anything that'll give your your yard some um inspiration yeah and, interest and, and interest you know, uh, through the winter season something to look at you mm -hmm. know it's different it's it's, it's good either it be color or texture. stems or the bark the yeah. texture right now this is a sedum stone crop and um, that's what it looks like in the fall and there again it blooms, there are it, it blooms so like, many types of sedum oh there's <laughs> More than 20,000, I'm sure, <laughs> and there's more all the time, but this is the uh, stone crop one, and um, it just, it's a pretty one for fall color, um, that'll give you that, they bloom are, a little late. Are they small? Yeah, they're short, they're little Okay, short so they plant. are, they can be used for ground cover um, and stuff. A little larger than that, maybe okay. six, eight inches, but, okay. but, okay. Um, but they'd be beautiful in a pot, you know, oh, by, sure. you know right by your front That's door right. would be really That's pretty, right. give That's you some right. color. And then this is the sedum that um, a lot of people have, but some people That's don't know about. That's the one I have in my yard. Uh, the Autumn Joy. It's um, some of the sedum is more pink. This is a little pinky looking, but and the Autumn Joy is more of an orangey mm -hmm. color, mm -hmm. you know, fall colors. Now, so. are sedums kind of like a succulent? Yeah, they uh, are. Okay. They're a succulent, and um, they grow about um, oh, I guess 12, 15 inches tall. 
the, the so do they drying. require a lot of being a succulent? They no, they're they pretty, pretty drought, drought tolerant. They're drought tolerant. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So they're they're good plants to have you know, mm -hmm. year round. Mm -hmm. um, and they kind of die back in the winter. Right. You know? So mine are already go back to that. There coming up. There we go. And one other thing you don't think about turning color in the fall is your hostas. That's now, right. Now some of the hostas, you know, they're green all summer, variegated or weather. And but there's a few varieties. I think this is a ventricasa variety. And this turns Isn't a beautiful, beautiful yellow, you know, before they drop their leaves. So I have I don't have that kind because no. mine are the kind that go from green to brown. To brown. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them do. Um, and if the deer don't eat them, you know, you may not have any leaves left if the deer eat them. But right. uh, I do have several right. that kind of turn yellow before they drop the leaves. But oh, that's that adds nice. some color too. Right. <clears throat> and other things you don't think about in your garden as fall colors, this is strawberries. So if you have a strawberry patch, who you know, thought? go out and look at it in the fall. You'll right. be surprised. It's got some fall color. And the same thing can color. be said for blueberries. And blueberries, right. So oh, fall color right. comes from a lot of different um, plants you don't think right. about. So, right. But that um, strawberry patch could really be a pretty addition to your fall color. You bet. You bet. Now, and as far as trees go, you know, of course, everybody talks about fall color in the trees. This is an Amur maple. You That's can't a ask very, for more color than from a maple. Yeah, all maples are beautiful. Right. But the Amur maple, it can be a tree or a bush. You could, this could have, you know, when it was smaller, could have just been left to have it sprouts out and be a bush. So or you can train tree, it as a tree. How high do you think it I'd would say get? 20 to 25 feet. Okay. This wow. is a, this is a, a very mature Amur maple. And then in the fall, that's what it would look Isn't like. Isn't that beautiful? It's all golden. And the funny part about the Amur maple is it'll be all golden one day and you go out the next day and like all the leaves are gone. It, in, like in one? In one or two <clears throat> days, all the leaves drop off. It's like it was just there and then they're gone. I wish all trees were like yes, that. Yes, I do too. Especially <laughs> those. that would be very helpful. <laughs> especially those oak trees that hold yes. their leaves till spring. Yes, so, my oak tree yeah. in my yard didn't drop yeah. their leaves till yesterday. Yeah. So, um, but the main thing to think about when you're when you're designing your garden or thinking about you know adding things to your garden, think about the fall color, right? You know, and right. and think about the different seasons. Now right? these were kind of different ones that we we mm -hmm. had, um, like and, and along with the, the maple tree, right. the the uh, and then your regular maples, sugar maple, your sugar oh, maples my are beautiful. Sakes. They are beautiful. Those are the star of fall. Right, they are. They're just they just pop in the in the woods and they mm -hmm. pop in your garden. Mm -hmm. But the thing there, you don't want to plant those in the spring. You want to go to the nursery in the fall and you want to see the color that tree is going to be. And it usually, if it's that color, you know, when you find it in the fall, it'll be that color again, but right. depending on the weather, you right. know, the weather has a lot of effect. Right. But <clears throat> if you just buy a sugar maple and you expect it to be that color, it may not be. Because there, again, there are lots of varieties. Yeah, and then there's different colors that come, I mean, there may be two exactly the same tree, same variety, right. but, but the color is different. But all of that is dependent on the that moisture tree. and, yes, and, that specific and the tree. cold and yeah. all of that so and that tree. For maples, I would suggest if you want a specific color, you know, you want definitely to know what color it's going to be, is, is pick it out in the fall. Right. And then if the nursery holds it for you till summer, spring, you know, plant it then. But, right. um, but those are variations, there will be variations. But the Amur maple always turns the, mm -hmm. the yellow. Mm -hmm. So, But there's a lot of things you can plant that... Um, well, and Give all of these plants have been very beautiful, mm -hmm. um, but you can add to your fall uh, um, garden, if you will, with the usual stuff, like mums. The mums. Oh, and that's the first thing you think about is mums. Right, yeah. and they come in a huge variety oh, of yeah. color. More and, and more. there again, we have the Garden Club has a fall plant sale, uh -huh. and the last two years we have been selling these huge mums oh, yeah. for uh, 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 yes and 15? and they're just they're they're just like massive a, yeah, and like they a also have tub full, right yeah. tricolor mm -hmm. uh, ones but i think one of the besides the the mum the tried and true cold 
weather flower is mm -hmm. the, the pansy. Mm -hmm. Ev oh, everybody yeah. loves the pansy color. for that's right. Yeah. That's right. So. Um, there's purple fountain grass. There's flowering kale, mm -hmm. which is very ornamental. Oh yeah, um, very colorful. And that works so well in pots mm -hmm. and um, asters, dianthus, mm -hmm. um, just so many things yeah. that you know. I don't have um, uh, roses that really um, produce colorful rose hips. No, but, I don't um, either. My my roses right, are right, but I've either. I've seen where um, some of them are like a bright red, mm -hmm, like red um, berries, right? You know, all over and the bush. I don't. I, don't I have, have a few that. rose hips on some of my roses, but most of them I don't. They're, the rose hips are kind of insignificant. Right. But. Have you ever grown witch hazel? Um, I don't think so. Well, they're supposed to be a beautiful they're, yellow to red color. Um, they are. A, as in for, for fall. Mm -hmm. um, and that's and they're just na there's a, natives that are really right, nice. Right. And so they, you know, they... And uh, they have a beautiful spring bloom on top of it. Oh, they do? Oh, yeah. They have a spring bloom and then the beautiful... And that's a, is that usually a white? A white to yellow, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, but like I said, there's just so many things you can oh uh, plant for your fall color. And, you know, when you're planting the garden, you have to kind of think about that. Right. And just like you plant in the spring for fall. Yeah. And you or plant, for, yeah. And you plant, you plant in, the fall. in the fall for spring. I was going to get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you so like your bulbs spring, and so forth. In the fall for spring. Right. You have to do the same thing if you're mm -hmm. planting for color mm -hmm. in the fall. Right. Um, just think about it before. Right. You know, you plant in the spring. Right. So, but there's a lot to do in your gardens this month. Oh, my goodness. In addition sakes. to planting all these things for fall color. Right. And so, April 1st is the day I usually put out my hummingbird feeders. They're going to start coming. And they may be a little late uh, this year because it's been a little cool. Mm -hmm. Some of my mm -hmm. things are just slow this year. And the daffodils, oh, the early goodness. daffodils got zip, zapped, and they kind of look frozen. So and the later of, daffodils are beautiful. Yeah, some of my daffodils had just opened up, mm -hmm. and then we had that cold snap. Mm -hmm. And now they look like, yeah, uh, they're still, you know, they're not brown. They're still but they're, white, and gorgeous, but they're kind of... <laughs> they're wimpy. Yeah, yeah they wimpy. looking, yeah. you know, so... But the... the um, Bella Vista daffodils are beautiful oh, this year. They're yes. all over the yes. the town center, and they're all over the, the fire station, the, the library. The library. Yeah. And I just yeah. see them at different people's houses as I go by. You know, mm -hmm. I'll see the Bella Vista daffodils because mm -hmm. they, they are beautiful. And we will beautiful. all always be selling the Bella Vista daffodil <laughs> right. because I, that's our statement. The, yeah. the city's statement. That's our city uh, yeah. flower. So yeah. we've got and over fourteen thousand that we planted in the city. Wow. So far. So we'll be planting more, like bartering more, and just spread spread them all over the city. Right, um, right. But anyway, get your hummingbird feeders out because uh, they'll be coming. And your ratio is four to one, water to sugar. And don't don't put, you know, red food the color reds. in. You don't need yeah. that. Most mm -hmm. of your feeders have some red. They're going to find your their feeder. And uh, But I usually get mine on April 1st, and I've had them from April 1st to April 10th is about the time they show up. Yeah. The first one shows up, the right. scout, to, to scout it out. So he usually comes up by the 10th of April. And then um, now, you gotta, now you got to clean now up Now you got to kind of start cleaning up your gardens. Mm -hmm. And if you've done a fairly decent job of it in the fall mm -hmm. where you prepared your beds yeah. for winter, now you can pull that and start to clean up. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to let your leaves lay there no, on no. those those beautiful plants because they're going to just smother them. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So you've got to clean all that out. Yeah. Um, you want to start uh, doing a little fertilizing this time mm -hmm. of the year and mulching and mulching yeah. and mulching. Right. Um, it's just this time of the year in a garden is very. Busy. It's labor intensive. And, right, yeah. because what you do now will depend on what you'll see mm -hmm. in, in the, the summer. summer. Mm -hmm. So you got to do a good job. Yeah, yeah. And then this is a good month too uh, to um, 
divide your perennials yeah, or yeah. to plant perennials, um, trees and shrubs. This is a great month to plant because the the ground's getting you know a little uh, easier to work with now, and and you know you're not out there in the cold. Right, so and hopefully our rains will be yeah, we've a had, bit more uh, consistent. Well, we've so. had quite a bit of moisture this winter. Mm -hmm. It was a good winter. We didn't mm -hmm. have to have drag the hoses out this winter, so. And well, then, and now, you know, annuals, everybody wants to get the annuals going right uh -huh. now, but be careful mm -hmm. because you could, you know. Be replanting. Yes, yes. We're not totally out of the woods for no. uh, uh, annuals yet. No. Um, so you've got to be really, really careful. I mm -hmm. know everybody is so anxious to get oh, some know. color going and that sort of thing and that the Everybody, the nurseries and the big box stores are starting to get their supply in for uh, right. the and flowers. Right, and they just got them in early, and now the ones that were frozen are for sale for 25 cents. Right. So, right. They're not, <laughs> you know, even if you right. do plant them, they're just going to sit there. They're not going to grow. So, right, yeah. right. And then bulbs, um, the, like I said, the bulbs this year are beautiful, the daffodils. Yes. And, the, yes. and the tulips are starting to, to break ground and starting to bud. I've had a few tulips. And Jerry was so sweet. She planted a bunch of um, tulips for me uh, last fall, and they're up about that oh, high, and I'm, I'm so, so excited yeah. to see them. Yeah. Yep. They're almost, some people treat them like an annual because the deer eat them. Oh, and, you know, yes. They, yes, I've had they that don't, problem. They don't do as well here as they do up north. You right. Know? So I think right. they like, but if they have a cold winter, sometimes they do better. But be sure if you have a bulb and you it blooms, you know, cut off the dead bloom, but leave that foliage for at least six right. weeks because that feeds that bulb and puts the next year's bloom in that bulb. Right. That's how they they get right. their next their next bloom. So just leave that foliage on. Just let it lay on the ground till it turns yellow or whatever. Um, but just leave those right. those bulbs alone. And I know that people are anxious to get their house plants back outside. Oh yeah. Not yet. No. You've got to wait until at least the the nighttime temperature is consistently 50 degrees yeah. or or more. Yeah. And that isn't yet. That isn't no, this time no. yet. So that could be mid May. To, it know, could be. You hit it that could be. Time. So in the lawns, you want to um, fertilize about two weeks after it greens up. A lot of the lawns are green. Uh, they've greened up now, and uh, you just need one one inch of water a week. Um, so this is mm -hmm. a good time to mm -hmm. to maybe do your um, um, your soil test in your lawns. If your lawn's a little thin or whatever and you're having trouble with it, do a soil test. Uh, they're free from the extension office on 14th Street and um, they'll tell you what you need to, you know, add, whatever. So those are free for soil tests. So. And the roses are starting to come up. Uh -huh. they're, and they're leafing out. If the forsythia is blooming, it's time to trim the roses. That's correct? what my rosarian has always told me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the forsythias are beautiful this year. Right. They're just beautiful. Yep. So, but then um, just be sure that you start fertilizing mm -hmm. after, the, after their growth. Water mm -hmm. before you fertilize and mm -hmm. water after you fertilize, mm -hmm. and then uh, your roses will be beautiful. Right. So. right. And then it's time for vegetables. Vegetables. Get your winter crops can be planted from February to April is lettuce, kale, Those. green peas, greens, peas, turnips, radishes, beans, beets, broccoli. Cabbage, carrots, you're going to start really yes. putting them in the ground. Yep. So, yep. Some of them do prefer the cooler weather, but others will wait till the warmer right. weather blows. So. Right. But for more information, you can always go to the Bella Vista Garden Club plant sale. Um, I mean, Garden Club website. It's a website. Um, it's bellavistagardenclub.com. We've got a, a, just a, a volumes of information right. Right. on the gardening info page, and there's just all kinds of links you can go to if you want more information about a specific subject. So the Garden Club has a wonderful website with a lot of information. Yes, it does. And um, Bella Vista, um, I mean the Benton County Master Gardeners also mm -hmm. has a website with mm -hmm. a lot of information. And with their upcoming expo that you can get a yeah. lot of oh, information. Yeah, yeah. At they're that. always willing to share their knowledge. They are. They're, it's a great organization. Mm -hmm. And the next Bella Vista Garden Club uh, meeting is going to be April 24th at the Community Church, Bellavista Community Church on Lancashire. 
and we start at 11 o'clock. We have a light lunch, and then we have the program. And this month, the program is going to be Ryan Neal from the Benton County Extension. He's a Benton County Extension agent. Oh. And he is just delightful to listen to, and he's he's very knowledgeable. So this is going to be a good program, and then the... Uh, the program is just called Gardening Topics, so mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure what he's going to talk about, but I know it's going to be informative and interesting. And guests are always welcome. Oh, yes. Know, we love Please to have guests come. Please and, come and, and join us. Yeah, we love to have guests. So um, I guess we're wrapping it up, but I just want to thank you again for coming, being my guest. We always learn so much from you, Barb. Uh -huh. You're just a wealth of information about so many <laughs> subjects and always add a little fun to our show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and I uh, said, so I hope you've enjoyed the show and um, we'll tune in again next month. And until then, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. <laughs>